Welcome back to the ACE Talks podcast, where we talk about Ecuador and a little more. And today, we're definitely diving into a little more territory because we're going to talk about AI and the fact that it's getting kind of scary. And don't be fooled by the fact that this is a topic that's not specifically related to Ecuador. It does have relation to Ecuador because I will be talking about how AI has been progressing over here, at least from the point of view that I've had, the things that I've been able to see, and also some things that are gonna be important, especially for the United States, coming very soon. But these things will be mentioned more around the end, so stay tuned for that. And also, if you're not from the States or if you're not in Ecuador, this could also apply to you because everything that we're gonna talk about today, or at least probably the majority of things, could be coming to a city near you as well. So don't underestimate the power of AI, especially with how it's progressing, which I will, for this whole podcast episode, preface everything by saying that something that I've heard a lot on um, different YouTube channels and such, and especially from Philip DeFranco, I think I've heard it from him the most, the fact that AI is probably at the worst right now than it's ever going to be. And in fact, I mean, my watch isn't on right now, like it's, it's actually recording, but <laughs> it, it, five seconds just passed. Yeah, I just waited for five seconds to pass and I think AI just got a little bit better. So don't underestimate AI. But anyways, let's get started with the talking points. And the first thing I wanna talk about, of course, is the positives. Sometimes people like to hear the bad stuff. I've said it before too, tell me the bad so when I hear the good, it kind of balances out the bad. But I kind of feel like with AI, with a topic like this, it's got, it's bad and good at the same time. Even what's good is bad. So it's, it, it's such a, a weird thing. So I guess the first thing I wanna talk about in terms of the good things about AI, and I think the most obvious thing that I've noticed about AI, at least the implementation that people are, that people wanna use it for, is the fact that it, it's being targeted or at least people wanna use it for work. And I think that is probably the, the best case scenario for a justification for using AI because work is hard. Like I, I, I keep, I've said this before, I, I might keep saying it in the future as well, and no job is inherently easy. Like for the person who's doing it, it could be easy because they're used to it. And it could be hard because they're new at it or it could be hard because they had to study really hard to do it. But I don't think any job is actually easy because if it were easy, then everyone would be doing it. Or alternatively, it would be a job that, it, 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 there'd probably be some complications to it that we wouldn't know about. Because we can look at a job from the outside and compare it from our perspective and it'll look easy because maybe our job feels harder. But for the person who's doing it, like I said, it's, it could be complicated. So there's a lot of things that I could talk about there, but just understand that AI is basically, in my opinion, like the, the most, I guess, ideal scenario for usage of AI is using it for work. And I think it's a very good thing if it's implemented correctly, which once again, this is why this is the good part. And a lot of people have worried about AI taking their jobs, but the argument online, and I think the reality is that AI isn't going to inherently replace people because you can't replace people. There's a very human element in, in work and especially, let's just say creative forms of work, which is where I've heard a lot of the discussion online because that's, I guess, part of my reality since I do make these videos. But there's that whole argument that no matter how good AI is, it's not gonna replace a person because a person can do person things, like human things. And AI kind of spits out very, I guess you could say robotic things. And I've noticed this, like if, if I wouldn't have investigated it, I probably wouldn't have noticed it because I just, I guess you could just say sometimes I consume content to consume it, sometimes. But since I'm a creator, I do try to consume content with a purpose, aside from maybe informing myself, but like also learning from the process that the other creator went through to make their content. So it's kind of noticeable when you see a video that's made by AI because it just feels less real. It feels kind of like it was, I guess I, I would say forced. 
And the reason why I use forced is because I've also, I have used AI and this is part of the good things. Like I said, it, it, it ties into work very heavily because the main use I've given AI and I think really the only use I've given AI is investigating stuff for my videos. And not even the information because I have to look that up on Spanish websites, uh, different types of news websites in order to get the news that I give on my YouTube channel for Ecuador. Like, and also when I talk to my friends that's, and people that I know or even when I make interviews on the street, that's just real life interactions. But whenever it comes to like asking a question about uh, what do you think would be a good title for a video that would make people want to click? The answers that it spits out, yes, they might seem kind of like compelling. I'm just not sure to who they would seem compelling to. Because it, it is kind of clickbaity when someone says something like the most insane uh, challenge ever, I don't know, something like that. But like when, when it comes out from AI, it comes out similar to that and it feels kind of fake. And I'm not sure, like that's why I'm not sure if creators are also like making AI titles. But I think at least from what I've seen from YouTube gurus and people who teach YouTube, is that they do say that you can use it kind of like as a support. Like AI will spit out a title that is, that AI deems to be clickable. And then afterwards, you as a creator, you have to go in, check that title, and kind of switch it around for words that feel a little bit more believable. Because like I said, like hearing something like the most insane challenge just feels kind of robotic. And I feel like there has to be something more human to it. Now, I'm not sure if maybe I'm just not getting the whole YouTube game, if you want to call it a game, but it just feels very robotic when you see a title like that. But that's just YouTube, of course. There are other jobs, of course, that will benefit from AI. Stuff like people in, in law cases, I've already heard that it's been used to help with cases like that. There's also a negative to that, which hopefully I don't forget because I can be very forgetful. But there have been cases where it's been help, helpful in those situations. People who are trying to implement it into websites in order to help find information better so it's work related because the person who develops the website, they can put in AI to make it easier for the people who are doing customer service. Like it kind of feels unnecessary to rely on a customer service like a person all the time when AI can solve very simple problems that someone is having. Now of course, I don't want to say take away the job from the person and give it to the robot, but like the simple things let the robot handle it and if it's something that the robot can't handle, the AI, then give it to the person who, who has that job as customer service. Like once again, I'm not against, you know, people having jobs. I'm just against like completely eliminating AI just because it feels like it could take people's jobs. Like I said, it has to be a complement to the work, not just take over the work of a person. But that's, that's one of the main positives that I see for AI. Uh, the other thing that I've also seen AI helpful for is once again investigations. I, I say once again because technically when I said my example of investigating titles, like it's investigation. But I also mean it in the sense for people doing homework maybe or students who might need to investigate something. And you know, we can start this whole argument and that's probably gonna be part of the negatives which we can argue there. But it, it of course there are gonna be students who abuse it. Um, but what I want to say with the positives is the fact that think about how how things have progressed up until now Before we didn't have the internet and we're talking about way before and People had to go to libraries in order to get information and of course the people who came after the library like the internet craze the internet revolution I guess you could say They had the people who had the internet had the ability to find information much faster and the people with the libraries I mean, of course, they were gonna be like, oh, you guys have it easy. So now that there's AI that can make it even easier by finding information and summarizing it, are the people with the internet going to complain because, oh, now you have it easy over here with the AI? I don't think so. At least I don't think anyone should complain. If you wanna complain, you know, it's your life. But it just feels kind of silly that people with internet like they, they, there are people without the internet who complained about the people with the internet and for the people with the internet to complain about the people with AI, you know, about them getting information easier when, I mean, the people with the internet had it very easy to begin with. So, you know, it's just, 
a conversation, not necessarily a fight that I'm trying to pick with anyone, just what I feel in regards to finding information. It's become easier and I think it's a good thing as long as it's used appropriately, of course. Like don't take the information and just put it there on, on the work. And I guess this is where we can transition to the negatives, which we'll start off with this one since it's the one we're talking about. And it's the fact that of course there's going to be people who just take the information that AI spits out and just plops it on a sheet of paper and hey, I'm done. Um, I did my assignment and that's not okay because as a teacher, I've already seen this being implemented in, in schools. Like I haven't been working at schools, but I have a red of, a, a red. I have a network of teachers. I said red because in Spanish they call it the network, they call it a red, una red, but it's actually just the network. And in the network of teachers, there's a bit, already been talks of students who use AI just to finish their assignments. I've even seen it at the academy where we're not exactly demanding homework every day from students. It's just from time to time we'll send something in order to ensure that they're practicing at home. And sometimes they'll use AI to complete it. So it's noticeable because especially when you're teaching something like English, because you know the level of the student and for them to spit out something that's just too much for what their, their level is at that moment, you know that there's something wrong here. So, you know, easy to call out there, but in schools, now I've seen that they have like AI tools and I think you just use the internet, like you can find AI check and to see how much of it is possibly AI. So it's like, you have ways to check if something is AI, but the fact that it's being used for that is already a negative because as many people who I think, like I use, with the, with the same example that I used about the library and, uh, and the internet and going into the AI, the fact that people who had a library, like who had to use a library in order to find information, I think they had an advantage and they probably had like, they probably still do, people who, who are still from that era. Um, I, I know it sounds kind of weird, I don't wanna say it as in like, oh, you know, old, but like it has been a long time. But um, basically, the people who used the library, I think their, at least their ability to find information is a lot better than the people who are just using AI and just spitting out information. Even the people with the internet are gonna be better than the AI generation because if people are just letting the internet, well, AI do everything for them, then what are they doing to learn? This is something similar to a, to a teaching style that I personally have in, when it comes to teaching languages. And it's the fact that I prefer my students to use like a dictionary or to, to ask. Like if they need to ask me, they can ask me. Because if they're just using like a really quick type and done, like it just goes away. It just like, oh, you get the answer and you just put it on a sheet of paper and it's gone. Or you don't even put it on a sheet of paper. You just bring out the answer, you print it out and you just turn it in and it's gone. And you don't care about it anymore. So it's different when you had to put in the effort in order to find it. That's why I think at least one of my uh, teaching styles is making sure that there's an effort being made in order for the person to learn. Because if there's no effort, then you don't care about it. There are a lot of things in life that you can say when it comes to you easy, you don't really care about it because it just came to you so easily. But when you worked for it, you appreciate it more. So, you know, just, you know, a little, a little bit of a part of a separate conversation, but very much ties into this because like I said, AI is, is making things too easy and students are taking advantage of that in the wrong way. And that's just students because then we go back into the same, the first positive, but as a negative, which is people using this AI to help them with their work. And yes, AI is going to help you out a lot and you have to work hand in hand with it, but not just AI everything and no work, nothing. <laughs> because the fact of the matter is that people who are using AI and the same example that I used earlier, thank goodness I remembered, the whole lawyer situation, someone using it for a case, it, I remember, I, I remember hearing about this, that someone used AI for a case. I think I heard it from Legal Eagle on YouTube. And he mentioned that someone used it for a case and it spit out a case, AI spit out a case that didn't even exist. So AI literally just gave them something that was fake. And of course the person didn't even do their homework, their research, their, you know, double checking, 
which is what you should do when you're working with AI, make sure that everything is legit, and they ended up presenting something that, that was actually nothing, technically. It was something, but not something real, so it's technically nothing. So that's the situation with the negative side of AI. And of course, you could also go into how AI, at least right now, has begun, and it went from something super positive to super negative. Because I remember the, I don't remember what month it was, but I remember there was a month where AI just blew up out of nowhere and people started using these like AI generated avatars, like profile pictures. They were really cool. I'm not gonna lie, they were really cool. And if I would have had the money to be able to purchase an app that you know could produce one, I would have loved to have one for myself as well. But the fact of the matter is that that quickly in less than a month just shifted into theft because people who, artists, of course, creatives, they noticed that the AI was pretty much infringing on their work, on their, I guess you could say their copyright, because they made, they were, they would see like signatures, parts of signatures, like fused into the image. And it was kind of like, this is my work, or this is the work of someone, a creative, an artist. And AI is basically stealing in order to produce new images. And that's not good. So that's the, the negative side of AI. But this is where AI starts to get kind of scary and this is where it starts to kind of influence everything, everything. Because the fact of the matter is that like with AI, it's, it's a useful tool, but it's also a very bad tool. <laughs> the reality of so many tools in life, even a simple knife, which is which, a kitchen knife, which is supposed to be used to, you know, do stuff in the kitchen, people can use it for bad things. <laughs> so um, the, the reality is a lot of things have this, this two sides that like one side is good, one side is bad, and um, AI is no exception. So just with images, you can imagine how many people can distort a reality by using an image, like let's just say I ask for a prompt, um, since we're talking about Ecuador, um, on, well, on my podcast and my channel, I do talk a lot about Ecuador. So just imagine I ask for a prompt that says, oh, uh, give me an image of Daniel Noboa, Ecuador's president, um, stealing from a little kid. I know it's the least believable thing ever because why would multimillionaire Daniel Noboa want to steal from someone, especially a kid, especially in his position, but you can generate images like that. I mean, I think right now there are certain like, certain restrictions to AI where you can't generate images like that. But I know that there's some AI that generates some pretty heinous things. Like most recently, the thing that I saw, and I don't know who the person is because I don't remember names of a lot of celebrities. I can remember names of YouTubers better than I can remember names of celebrities, to be honest. But let's just say famous person, a famous lady, A, they had uh, a deep fake made of them as a child. And like um, pretty much, you know, it was uh, not suitable for work content, let's just say. So imagine that image being produced of that person and not just of that person, but that person as a child. So there's already a lot of problems there. First of all, like, you know, the image of the person and damaging their reputation if anyone believed it. And it's the internet and people believe a lot of things. That's going to be part of the conversation later on for this country. And I guess not just this country, but a lot of places in the world. But the fact of the matter is like you produce something like that and a lot of people are going to believe it because people like to believe things. I don't know. People believe things on the internet. I think there's a meme that goes around just saying, if it's on the internet, you believe it. You just believe it. That's why I don't really like cancel culture as a whole because it believes a lot of things that maybe aren't true. Cancel culture does have its moments where it's right, but when it's not, it really does destroy the life of a person because even if you're able to convince the majority of people that you know what was said there was wrong, there's a lot of people who are still gonna believe it's right. So it's like you still mess with the appearance, the, the image of this person and it spreads. 
even if it's spreading less than it would have spread if it were real. If it were real, of course, let it spread because I guess the reality needs to be known. I digress. The point being that there was this image of this celebrity that was made, not suitable for work. And um, yeah, there are websites that do that. Websites that use people's images in order to, I guess, profit from them. And there's also more legal where you can talk, you know, because there is uh, chat GPT, there are chat bots nowadays, and some celebrities or some people who have uh, fame. It, it's just that it's hard for me to say, like I do think YouTubers are celebrities, the ones who have like millions of subscribers. Um, and same thing with Twitch uh, stars, but I don't know if they consider themselves to, to be celebrities. So let's just say uh, people who have fame, they have allowed, given their, their voice and their, I guess, their uh, knowledge to create chatbots where you can imagine that you're talking to these people, which is good for the people who, who love these, these celebrities or these, these people with fame because, um, I guess it's good, because you get the opportunity to, I guess, believe that you're talking to that person, but it kind of does give you this, this dual... Okay, I'm, I'm gonna give you my, my idea of this. It's, it's good, I guess, in that sense, where you wanna mitigate the person maybe stalking the actual person, because that does happen, and you give them a chatbot where they can just talk to the person and feel like they're having a conversation with the real person. And, in, and, and what I don't exactly 100% agree with is the fact that people say, at least the people who promote these, these chatbots, People say that having the chatbot will mitigate loneliness, but I think it's more lonely, and this is my thought, it's more lonely to be talking to a chatbot than to be talking to no one at all. Because like talking to a chatbot just kind of feels like, especially if you pay for it, it, it feels like you're, you're paying for something or you're talking to someone that doesn't exist. And I understand imaginary friends. Okay, you got an imaginary friend, that's fine. <laughs> you create it with your own mind and that's your life and you might never tell us about it. But um, talking to a chatbot and believing that that's the solution to loneliness, it, like I said, it just kind of feels like it's making you more lonely because you have to go to that extreme in order to solve that loneliness. I mean, at that point, you might as well use that same money, go out, on a trip and meet people in a different country, uh, come to Ecuador and, and talk to the locals. Locals are very friendly and they'll be able to give you a much better realistic conversation than a chatbot. Well, I guess depends on your perspective. If you wanna talk to Mr. Beast or if you wanna talk to someone else who you really admire and you think that that's more real than anything else, then you know that's you, that's your money, that's your life, but it just doesn't feel good to me. But anyways, uh, I've, I've digressed again into something that, um, well, it's a reality. It's just something that I feel that it's not the ideal, but I'm not going to shame people for it either. I'm just going to say, I just don't think it's the ideal thing to do. If you want to do it, do it. Like I said, it's your life. It's your money. I just don't think it's the way. <laughs> so that's the, the negative. And uh, there's so many more negatives that we can talk about. Um, and actually we are because there's one more thing I almost forgot. And this is what ties into um, Ecuador coming soon, and even now, I guess. And also, it ties into other countries, especially the United States coming very soon, and anywhere else in the world, to be honest. And it's the creation of AI-generated videos. And I recently saw this on Marques Brownlee, MKBHD's channel. And um, he had talked about this new AI that's called Sora. Thank goodness I remembered because I love Kingdom Hearts and I remember Sora. And of course, I watched Digimon and I remember Sora. So the name Sora stuck with me, but I normally would forget the name of something like that. But basically, Sora creates very realistic videos using AI prompts, using you know prompts that you give the AI. So you tell the AI, hey, I want a video of um, my dog doing a triple backflip. And it'll give me a video of my dog, maybe not my dog, but a dog 
doing a triple backflip. And that's going to be crazy. He's gonna, you're going to look at that and be like, that's really cool. There was a video that Marquez Brown Lee, MKBHD, showed of a guy sitting on a cloud. And that was really cool because the guy looked so real and the cloud looked so fluffy and real. So it was like, it's very realistic. And how this ties into how it's going to affect things negatively in, in various parts of the world is especially during these election campaign cycles, which the United States is currently in the process of being very close to, from what I understand. And it's like, imagine someone makes an AI generated video and since it looks so real, people believe it because people share things that are not real all the time and people believe it. And the reason why earlier in this podcast episode I said that it's, it's so common here in Ecuador for people to believe things is because people share things very easily. Like if you have WhatsApp, WhatsApp, however you want to call it, um, you know that people in their stories, they share a lot of things that are news that are very like sensational and extreme news. Like, and it, it is normal. People do that a lot. I, I see it a lot less from other countries like the United States because I use Instagram. And on Instagram, when I see people from the States post, post things, it's just about their life, you know, just some like really pretty picture. But over here, you will see people in WhatsApp posting videos of some really extreme thing happening. And I can only imagine when AI videos really take off and especially during election campaigns, like how bad that could get. So this is my, I guess you could say, warning to everyone who, who's like, no matter where you're at, try not to believe all the videos. I know videos were probably the last form of like something real and, and being able to see that it's real because you see it happening in a video. But now it's gonna be, you're gonna have to look for for what really is real in a video because not everything's gonna be real, it's just gonna look real because AI's just gotten to that level. And you will notice that the AI videos, at least from the prompt, uh, from, the, from Sora that um, MK, MKBHD showed, they do have some errors. If you look at the video really closely, they do have errors. But it's so realistic that for someone who's not paying attention to the minor details, they could believe it at the moment, share it immediately, and regret it later, unfortunately, because everything <laughs> comes with that layer of regret. Now, another way that I feel that AI negatively influences Ecuador, I guess it's not that it influences Ecuador negatively, it's just Ecuador won't be able to completely take advantage of it yet, at least as fast as the rest of the world is. And I do realize that things have changed a lot from when I got here to Ecuador, because I remember when I got to Ecuador, things arrived to Ecuador very slowly. Like the States was already pulling out iPhones and over here everyone was still on Nokia's. Like there were no fancy phones unless, unless you were swimming in money and you traveled constantly to the States so you had knowledge of that. So I know things changed a lot when, like, when internet really popped off over here because now things do feel like they reach Ecuador faster, they just reach Ecuador faster and more expensive. Not faster than, than other countries or the States but faster than they used to before and more expensive now. So basically what I want to, what I'm saying by this is what I mean by this is that when, when Ecuador really gets to use AI in the good ways that it wants to use them, it's not going to be available for everyone. I mean, just look at the internet as a whole. I remember pre pandemic, I would ask my students because I had so many dynamic activities in my mind, but you need your phones or you need like some kind of internet connection. And I could say that with certainty right now, at least 50% of the class, be it because of laziness or because it's true, because that was their economic situation, they didn't have a phone or at least a phone that could connect to the internet because they didn't have a plan for it or the phone was just really bad or really old or just something that, you know, just for communication's sake, which is fine in the sense that you need a phone for communication, but it's not fine because it felt like we were really behind. I mean, we're talking about pre-pandemic, and if you look at other countries, I use the States as an example because it's the closest place to me 
as my second home, technically first, second, eh, it's still in a fight with that in my mind. But point being that with the States, like over there you have classrooms where everyone pulls out an iPad, you have everyone with laptops, or the classroom itself is on a digital screen, like the teacher can control the screen with their fingers. And it's like, like you know, tapping on it. Tap, tap, tap. And over here, that's just not a thing unless, you know, the very fancy, fancy, expensive places. I haven't really seen those yet. It, it's just not a thing. And I can imagine how long it's going to take to be a thing over here if it ever actually does become a thing because it's just, it's money. And we don't exactly have the money to be able to do those kinds of things. And you could say that's a good thing because it keeps us in this educational, I guess you could say bubble where we don't need technology in order to get ahead. And I guess you could say the people who are, ad who are adopting AI are maybe going to fall behind when they abuse it in the bad way. But I also feel like having those advantages especially if you're someone who knows how to take advantage of them correctly, it's a good thing to have it and a bad thing not to. So Ecuador is going to suffer in that sense. And in general, because like I mentioned in my newest YouTube video on my YouTube channel, GMAs, I did talk about uh, the EVA increase, the tax increase, the VAT increase, and the fact that uh, and as, as someone mentioned it, that people already have a hard time getting technology, like it's going to be more expensive, so they're not going to have access to it. And of course, there's the other side of the argument, like even like I just said, like we don't exactly need it all the time, but it just seems unfortunate to, to lack that advantage. That's just something that I feel that Ecuador is going to have a problem for a long time, if you want to view it as a problem, of course, which I personally do, because I feel, once again, we deserve to have that advantage as well. But there's a lot of things when it comes to AI. And like I said, it's not all good. The good things are good because there are people who are going to know how to take advantage of them in a good way. Even artists who are being affected negatively by AI, eventually, I'm pretty sure, and this is to me the ideal solution for all of AI, there have to be permissions like like more like something beyond copyright maybe or maybe it, it's just another form of copyright where people will have for example the ability to if a work you upload like you'll have a site where if you upload your work the site instantly registers it as your work like let's just say ace i upload a video that is an ace video so as soon as it's uploaded if anyone else tries to modify it or use like something from it that's like excessive, of course, like I don't mind if someone clips my video and uses it for something that they need because that's normal. People will react to your content and that's okay. Even if it's negative reactions, that's okay because not everyone's going to agree with you. But more like if they try to take it and manipulate it in a way where it changes what you're saying. So once it runs through anything, the site will Im Im immediately flag it and it won't be available. Either A, the person won't be able to use it on anywhere else like because it'll be flagged. Something will be entered into the code of that video. I don't know how that works. I'm not uh, a software developer or someone who, who messes with those things. I don't even know what you would call it when you mess with those things, but I have no idea. But the point being like something gets messed with that video where if it's re-uploaded anywhere, it won't be accepted, first of all, like it won't be able to re be re-uploaded. Or if it does get re-uploaded, it gets immediately tagged with this like giant watermark in the center of the video because that's where people would understand. Because if you put it on the bottom, you can crop the video. But it's put somewhere in the middle where it says AI generated or AI video. So that way people know it was created by AI. And the same thing for art. As soon as someone's work is being used as part of another AI image, that AI image that's generated immediately gets pff, a big AI flag in the middle of it where it says AI generated or something. And I think that would be the ideal way. But of course, either someone would have to create that site or I'm not, it, I'm not sure how that would work, of course. I'm just saying that that would be really cool and ideal to me. There's probably a lot of things that need to be done in order for that to work. But 
I feel like doing something is better than nothing because the more we do nothing, the more not suitable for work content is made, the more likely it's going to be that AI generated videos of bad things happening by someone who is maybe running for president or running for mayor or running for whatever are going to be made. And the closer we are to a world that's gonna be really, really heavily scrutinized for whether if something is AI or not. I don't wanna to have to think about it too much, to be honest, I'm kind of lazy in that aspect where I, if I can recognize a video as AI, which sometimes, most of the time I will because it just feels fake from the title to the way it's, it's produced, but that's because I'm a creator and I make videos and I know the more real aspect to it. And I don't even think I'm a like, wow, amazing creator that I know everything, but I can imagine other creators can notice that as well but someone who's not looking for those things, they're gonna be very confused. And I know some people in my audience might even now just be hearing about Sora and being like, there's videos that you can make that are not real? Yes, yes there are. So be careful with the internet nowadays because more AI content is going to get out there and you've gotta really be prepared for it. And especially, like I said, if you're in the States with elections coming up soon, don't believe everything that you see unless it comes from the source itself, the official source, or if there's something that can back that it's actually real. Because I wouldn't put it past someone who hates, let's just say someone who hates uh, Trump, that's the example that comes to mind, or Biden, any of the two, and they make a video of one of them in order to make them look really, really bad. And People would believe it because maybe they, they also don't like Trump or Biden, so they would believe it immediately. That's just something that can happen. So you have to really, really look out for it because that could be fake, like it could also be real. Like I could just literally be walking by, I don't know why President Biden would be over here in Ecuador, but I could be walking by and I could see President Biden stealing candy from a kid. I don't think that's ever going to happen, of course. So don't, don't quote me on that, but just an example. And it's like, I could actually see that happening. And if I post it, people are gonna think it's AI. So that, that's the other sad thing. Uh, real things are gonna be questioned if they're actually real. So a lot of people who do bad things are gonna be able to get away with it a lot easier now. And I'm not incentivizing anyone to do bad things, watch out, but I know there's gonna be people who use it for their own benefit because that's just the way everything else, everything is. Like I said at, the, at some point at the beginning of this podcast episode, what is good can also be bad. What is bad can also be good. But at the end of the day, it all depends on how you use it and uh, how everyone interprets it as well because interpretation is important as well. <laughs> if everyone sees the, the good video as something bad, then hey, that's what it is. And the bad video is something good, hey, that's just what it is. So yeah, that was uh, today's topic. I know, like I said, diving very much into the something else section of what I typically talk about, but I do have things that I like to talk about aside from Ecuador. And while I do talk about them more in these podcast episodes, I will, of course, when I have the chance, talk about them on my main channel in order to give more of an idea of other things that I feel are important that people should know about. Like I did recently with also the video that I made on my YouTube channel about the workers, like the kids working, which I still don't think is good, and um, them being abused pretty much. It, it's, a, it's a whole thing. So yeah, that was uh, today's topic. I hope you stick around for future episodes of the Ace Talks podcast. We still have a lot more things to talk about, not just of other things, but Ecuador as well. And these are the deep dives that normally I can't do on my YouTube channel because, heck, even with the videos that I make on my YouTube channel that are 20 minutes plus long, I do feel like it's a lot. But I also feel like when something is important, you have to dedicate time to it. So I really appreciate everyone who watches the podcast episodes as well as the videos on my channel, even if they're a slight bit longer than something someone else would make. So anyways, I hope you take care and have an excellent day. As always, ace out.